Welcome in to the Ravens Rundown. Powered by Chat Sports, Tyler Jones here with you. Appreciate you joining us. On today's show, we have a list of 10 potential candidates to be the next offensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. We'll tell you who those are and rank them by my personal favorites coming up in just a few moments from right now. Before we do, though, folks, want to make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We are your off-season headquarters for your Baltimore Ravens with daily news and rumors. Also, we are covering the NFL draft, coaching hirings, free agency, trades, and more. It's all in one place. If you love the Baltimore Ravens, you want more Ravens content, this is the place to be. Subscribe right now, youtube.com slash Ravens TV. Turn on notifications, and we will get started with today's show. Greg Roman is out, and so with that, the Ravens now head another direction. And we have a few days, at least, to see where the Ravens are going to go from here. And John Harbaugh spoke to the media this uh, past week with the news that there was going to be a change and kind of explained the process going forward. And as he explained the process, Gordon Ian Rappaport Uh, Lamar Jackson is going to have a say in choosing who the next OC is. And he reiterated his confidence in that Lamar will be around for this next offensive coordinator, stating Ravens coach John Harbaugh says it clearly. Lamar Jackson is our quarterback and says there is a 200% chance he stays. That's a lot of percent. He'll be involved in the OC hire. So with that... Let's take a look at the numbers for the Ravens offense. Whoever the new OC is will have to prove on some specific things here. Rush yards per game was pretty solid. Then beyond that, subpar or worse. Yards per game, 16th in the league, 20th in points. Passing yards per game, 28th. And then the red zone touchdown percentage, I think everybody remembers in the back of their minds the Bengals game, how that worked out the final week of the regular season. And they ended up with the red zone touchdown percentage for the year at 44%. That was 30th in the National Football League. So before we get to the names on my hot board, I was thinking about what I want to see in this new offensive scheme that comes into place. And I have five things specifically that whoever the offensive coordinator is for the Ravens will need to focus on. Number one is a balanced run and passing attack. Look, running the football, the Ravens do a really good job when it comes to the run game. But you have to be effective passing the football as well. And I'm not saying it needs to be a dramatic change where it needs to all of a sudden be an air raid passing attack. Not saying that at all. But you have to have balance. In order to win today's NFL, you have to run and pass the football well. They need to be able to do both and have a balanced attack. With that, got to take pressure off Lamar Jackson. We've seen two straight seasons now where Lamar has missed the final five games due to injury. And... I told you all season long here on the channel, I thought Lamar was being overworked, that they were setting him up for injury. And sure enough, Lamar did get hurt and miss the rest of the season. And with that, with having a running quarterback, you have to be able to find other guys to do things so he isn't having to do as much, in particular running the football. You got to trust J.K. Dobbins, some of these other guys take pressure off. Got to develop a vertical passing game. And part of that is you have to bring in receivers to be able to make a vertical passing game work. But you got to be able to move the football down the field. You have a really good tight end room. One of, if not the best tight end rooms in the NFL. I think that requires you taking advantage of getting the most out of 12 personnel when it comes to those sets of, uh, I'm not saying that you have to run four and five wide receivers all the time, but... When you have the backs that they do, and when you also have these tight ends, you need to effectively run 12 12 personnel and then red zone offense. Just got to get more points in the red zone. Don't settle for field goals. Got to get touchdowns. Stay out of the friend zone. Get into the end zone, as I like to say. So with that, before I get to the list, you tell me, who should be the Ravens' new offensive coordinator? You might get an ad break. If so, take advantage of it. And tell me in the comments section, Whether it's somebody we talk about or don't talk about today, let me know who you think should be the new OC for the Baltimore Ravens. So let's get to the hot board now of candidates for your Baltimore Ravens. Let's start out with a couple names in-house for Baltimore. James 
Urban, the Ravens quarterback coach, uh, is on this list, as is T. Martin, who's also the Ravens wide receiver coach. And I can say the same thing for both. They're at the bottom of this list because I would like to see a change of the guard of some sorts, bring in a whole entirely new scheme. And I feel like these guys have some guilt by association of some sorts because they were involved in Greg Roman's scheme in the lack of success. But what you can say about both of them is there is a familiarity with these players and with Lamar Jackson. I think that's kind of what keeps them on here is if Lamar is going to have a say in who is going to be the next OC, maybe he still likes those two guys potentially who he's been around. Then number eight on my list, a guy that I personally like, I watched him in college at Oklahoma State, was a really good quarterback there and uh, has gone on to be a football nerd of sorts. It wasn't too long ago. I remember talking to Zach Robinson when he was uh, working for Pro Football Focus and doing all the analytics and the charting and all that. And he's done a really good job with the Rams, won a Super Bowl with the Rams. Um, a very smart football mind. I think he could potentially be a good fit, kind of an under-the-radar guy. Number seven on our list is Byron Leftwich. He just got fired as the offensive coordinator of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But here's where I'm hesitant on Byron Leftwich, comparatively speaking, is I wonder if he's like the opposite of Greg Roman. Greg Roman, he ran the football too much, right? Well, Byron Leftwich in Tampa Bay passed the football too much and wore out Tom Brady and... They didn't have much of a run game there. So I'm worried that if you go left, which you might be getting the opposite version, basically, of Greg Roman. But at the end of the day, he has a Super Bowl ring. He led that offense to a Super Bowl and did a really good job. He was going to be the Jags head coach had he not backed out uh, at this time last year. So one bad year for Byron left, which doesn't tell the whole story of what he did in Tampa Bay. Then at number six is Matt Nagy. The question I have about Matt Nagy, though, is, What Matt Matt Nagy are you truly getting? When he was offensive coordinator in Kansas City, working with Alex Smith and company, he did a really good job and did a good job calling plays. But then his tenure when he was running the offense and was the head coach of the Bears was just a disaster. This year, he and Patrick Mahomes have been on the same page. Uh, He's done a really good job as QB's coach. There's a good track record for Matt Nagy, but I've seen the bad too. I don't know what Matt Nagy you're going to get potentially as your offensive coordinator, if you're going to get the good or the bad. With that great unknown, that's why he's not higher on this list. Now, I have the next five to get to here in just a second. But first, what should be the number one priority for the next offensive coordinator? When it comes to changing and salvaging this offense and moving forward, what should be the number one thing that this new OC needs to work on and fix? Let me know in the comments section what that number one priority should be. Number five on our list is Cliff Kingsbury, the former Arizona Cardinals head coach who is enjoying himself in uh, Thailand right now uh, after uh, being fired from the Cardinals. It doesn't seem like he is looking to necessarily jump at any opportunity back in the National Football League. He did work with Kyler Murray up until this past year. That offense had some success uh, there. And so maybe you could run a similar scheme to what you did with Kyler Murray to what you could do with Lamar Jackson. He played, uh, did a really good job uh, as the OC at Texas A&M with Johnny Manziel. So he's worked with mobile quarterbacks before. uh, So something to keep in mind, maybe Cliff Kingsbury could bring that system and fit it in with uh, Lamar Jackson on that front. Number four is Frank Wright, the former Indianapolis head coach. And he's being talked about for head coaching jobs. So he might not necessarily be available when it comes to being an offensive coordinator. But we know Frank Wright knows offense. He can coach. Um, He's done this at this level. Uh, You know, he's had success. It didn't end well for him in Indianapolis. But that's a guy that if you're looking for experience um, that, you know, has been around. You know, we saw him do a good job in Philadelphia previously. Frank Wright might be your guy there. And then number three, I really like Joe Brady. I thought he got screwed when he was the offense coordinator in Carolina. was kind of made to be the scapegoat for Matt Rule's problems. But ran, I think, the greatest offense in the history of college football when he was at LSU. And Joe Burrow and company won a national championship. 
did a really good, good job with the New Orleans Saints as an assistant there. Now he's doing a good job with the Buffalo Bills with Josh Allen. Joe Brady deserves to be an offensive coordinator in the NFL. And what I wonder is with him, what, what he did a good job with Joe Burrow in college was Joe Burrow is a hell of a runner, but he still did what he could to keep Joe Burrow in the pocket and keep him protected. I wonder if you can build a similar offense, if Joe Brady could, where he could keep Lamar Jackson enough to make him an effective passer, but not get hurt running the football either. Joe Burrow, or Joe, Joe Brady rather, that's a very fascinating one for me. Number two on the list, we go down to the college ranks, Bill O'Brien, the offensive coordinator at Alabama. And Bill O'Brien has had a lot of success. Uh, you go back to his time with the Houston Texans, although he's not a very good GM, that wasn't good. He did a really good job with that offense with Deshaun Watson and company. Penn State, he did a good job there as head coach. Previously as offensive coordinator in New England, he has been successful at every single stop that he's had in his career, most recently with the Crimson Tide. The one thing that would probably actually stop him from taking the Ravens job is not anything to do, I think, with Alabama, actually. I think Bill O'Brien does want to go back to the NFL level, but there has been some momentum about him returning to New England to work with Belichick. So if you want Bill O'Brien, you might have to move pretty quickly to get Bill O'Brien before the New England Patriots do, uh, as far as that goes. So that's why uh, I think it would be difficult potentially to bring in Bill O'Brien because it seems like there's traction for him to potentially go to New England. Number one on my list, if you've been watching this show, I've been talking about him a lot the last few weeks, and I will beat this drum once again. Todd Munkin, the offensive coordinator for the Georgia Bulldogs. He is my number one choice on my offensive coordinator hot board. A two-time national champion OC with the Bulldogs in 2021 and in 2022. I mean, hell, he got Stetson Bennett two national titles. That kind of tells me everything I need to know. He's also been in the National Football League. Previously, he's the OC for the Tampa Bay Bucks as well as the Cleveland Browns. And he's done it all when it comes to coaching offense. Quarterbacks, wide receivers, and running backs coach in his uh, NFL journey and college journey as an assistant. He has coached everything when it comes to offense. And he adapts to personnel. And I think that's the number one thing that you have to look at with this Ravens team. Greg Roman refused to adapt. Once the saying goes, you got to adapt or you die. Simple as that. And Greg Roman's not employed right now because he could not adapt. Todd Munkin's offense, what he did at Oklahoma State, is totally different from what he does now at Georgia. And we've seen the NFL offenses and the college offenses are two completely different things. And so for me, I think Todd Munkin is a smart enough guy that he could play to the strengths of the Ravens offense, but yet get the most out of it too at the same time. To me, Todd Munkin would be a home run hire, and I would not be waiting around if I was the Ravens to make this hire and try to bring Todd Munkin into Baltimore. What's your confidence level the Ravens will make the right hire? What are you feeling about that? Are you feeling pretty good? You feel nervous about that? I understand if you're a little hesitant. What do you think? Are the Ravens going to make the right call here? Scale for me your confidence level 1 through 10, whether or not the Ravens make the right hire or not here. Let me know, and we'll see you next time here on the Ravens Rundown. 